Hi everybody, my name is Anne. Thanks for joining me here on Art on the Creek. It is Saturday Review Day and I'm so glad that you're here. We're in my home studio in Parker, Colorado and I have looked at the Schmincke Hortum Super Granulating Sets before, but now I've got a new one to add to the family. I chose the Urban Set. I think it will really work well for typical Colorado landscapes, so let's go see what we can do with this one. Are you ready? Let's go paint. Schmincke Horridum is a great company and um, I like the products, I like using them, so this really isn't about um, testing their quality, it's more showing you what the product can do. Because I know a lot of you are really still curious about these. They come in all of these sets, this is an older printout from their website and not all of the sets they have are featured. They have, since these have come out, they've added the Urban Set, which is this one here, and also the Hayes Set. I'm hoping to add that one to my collection and um, I will put a link to um, a good good place to purchase all of these down in the description. Um, but if you wanted to look at my review of the other Schmincke Hortum sets that I have, I'll try and put a card up in the corner and I'll also put a link down in the description. Um, these are how I purchased the other curated sets. This is from an Etsy vendor and whoops, they've got a little disheveled. I think I dropped this one. If your watercolors ever do this, if they ever fall out, all you have to do is take a drop of water or two and put that in there. You can do it with a paintbrush. I just used a little uh, pipette there. And then you just place it right back in and that will, uh, that'll adhere it once again. So these come in uh, sets of five. As, as I've said, this one here is also a set of five. These are the curated palettes. You can buy them individually. What these are, are multi-pigment watercolors where the pigments will settle at different depths in the texture of your watercolor paper. So to get these to work for you for their fullest potential, you're going to want to use a more textured watercolor paper. Uh, rough would be great. If you're more accustomed to using cold press, I would recommend something like arches or a handmade paper, something that will give you a lot of texture. So at any rate, this is how I purchased them from uh, an Etsy vendor, and I will link to her shop as well in the description because uh, the customer service experience was fabulous. This is the Deep Sea and Forest. These are little quarter pans, and the way that I purchased them is like so. They were, uh, they were all put together, and all I had to do was write the color numbers on the side. Uh, she wrote one color number on one side, and so I filled in the rest so that I would know. And then you get a swatch card with it. The swatch card that she made had these cute little watercolor stamps on them, but I had already started doing one this way, so I just went ahead with my own system here. But you can see there's quite a lot of color variants, especially in this uh, indigo, the deep sea indigo. You can see there's some green around the edges, some purples in there. The deep sea violet actually kind of reminds me of Daniel Smith Moon Glow, which is a really popular color, multi-pigment color that a lot of people have. These greens are amazing. And uh, this is the forest line. There's also the volcano and galaxy. Of all of them, the Volcano is the one that um, I have found personally that I think the granulation is harder to see. Doesn't mean it doesn't work, it just means that for me, for my eyes, it's just a little harder to see. I really like the colors though, they're very vibrant. None of these are chalky, they're all, um, they're all high quality professional paints. And then the other set that I purchased from her shop is the Tundra and the Shire. Now when you purchase these, you purchase the tins separately. I just bought the one set alone and then one with a tin and then I just put them in here together. You could fit a third in here if you wanted to. Um, these Shire greens are magnificent and these Tundra colors are also really reminiscent to me of uh, where I live here in Colorado. And that is what uh, appealed to me so much about this urban set. The colors that come with it, you get a yellow, red, a green, brown, and a gray. And these colors are just magnificent. I looked at those and I thought, oh, well, that looks like the view out my backyard. So what we're going to paint today is something from my imagination. I don't have a reference photo this time, but it's just something from my imagination of a southwestern scene. And it's just very typical of uh, some of the areas in our state and some things that you would find in, say, Arizona or Utah. Without further ado, let's get to swatching these guys out and let's find out what they can do. 
So I've got myself all set up here, nothing fancy. I'm using a ceramic palette and um, there's a little bit of white gouache in there, but that won't bother us. There's enough spaces where I can squeeze out a little bit of this paint individually and then we can see how it acts. These are in tube format, the five milliliter tube. They also come in larger tubes, but I decided that the five milliliter, like I said, is plenty for me. And actually the quarter pans are really plenty because um, just the way I paint, I feel like when you get these super granulating colors, the pigments aren't as deep and rich as some of your other watercolors. And these are wonderful for accents or mixing or things like that. So these sets do come in eight series of five colors each. And those are the Volcano, Desert, Shire, deep sea, glacier, galaxy, tundra, forest, and this urban is limited edition and so is the haze. Let's open the box. Let's see what we can find in here. Um, I just got to grab a uh, craft knife here and I will slit open this little adhesive dot that's holding it. It's just like a little round piece of tape. And the box is, is sturdy enough. I'm, I'm happy with that packaging and uh, it's easy enough to open. It comes with this little foam insert on the top, which is great because it keeps the paints from uh, jiggling around. And once again, here are the colors. You do get the yellow, uh, red, green, brown, and gray. So it's a nice little earthy set. I feel like if you're not one to paint urban landscapes, uh, you can certainly use this for many other applications as I am going to do clean sheet of paper in the sketchbook here. This sketchbook I'm using is unfortunately no longer available, but it does have a nice texture. So again, if you're testing these at home, just remember to use something that has a lot of texture so that you can get the fullest effect of the granulating paint. Let me just write on here what these are, that these are the, the Schmincke Urban set of granulating watercolors, and uh, I'll get this all set up for us watching. So looking at the tubes, I will tell you right now that finding, oh, there's another foam thing underneath there. That's good, I like that. Finding pigment information on these paints is not the easiest thing in the world. Uh, the pigment information is not listed on that printed color sheet that I showed you and I got that directly from their website. It's on the tubes and you can find it on uh, Blick, their website. They do list the pigment information and I suppose if I dig in uh, the Schmigge Horton website I could have found it but um, I found it a little bit challenging to find that pigment information so I will tell you what they are here. This yellow is great. It's going to separate into a couple of different colors as all of these do. But this one is a PY159 with a PV16. And it's separated right away after I uh, squirted it in there in the little palette. So you can really even see that as soon as we get it wet. The red, the urban red, is a pigment of uh, PY159, PR108. PB35 and a PBR6. Just about all of these have that uh, PY159 in, which I thought was kind of interesting. The green one, again, starts with a PY159 and then a PB36 and a PBK11. The brown has the PY159, PR108, and a PBK11. And then finally, the gray is PY159, PR108, PB35, and a PBK11. So I really like how all of these have that same PY159 in it. Um, it kind of keeps them really interesting as a family together, I think. And uh, these are all very warm colors. I really enjoyed using them. So let's get started. I'm using a silver black velvet round number eight here to do the swatching. And you can see the paints, of course, re-wet just as you'd expect. Um, I hope you can see that pigment separation in the ceramic over there. It's a little bit slow to happen, but just keep your eyes on it and it will create a little pool of purple next to that yellow. So what I'm doing is I'm just kind of uh, putting a little bit of a mass tone on the top of these two there, and then I will rinse my brush and make sure it's clean. Now watch this. Do you see that violet come out through that yellow? I'm just bringing water up to that mass tone to see how these paints flow and to kind of see what they do. And you can see what I mean by them not being very richly or deeply pigmented. The color's not very intense. It's just interesting and I really appreciate that. It's nice to have something a little bit more subtle in, uh, in a watercolor choice. And these are certainly uh, light fast. They are uh, made by a very reputable manufacturer. I read somewhere once that uh, Schmincke Hortum, they, it's kind of like wine, you know, you have different grapes, different years, and you have your favorite wine, and then one year it's not, uh, it's a little bit different, something happens with the crop, and the grapes are a little bit different, so the wine is different that year. Well, I think that Schmincke Hortum, I read somewhere that 
their gum Arabic is sourced much in the same way so that different years can produce different uh, strengths of pigment depending upon where they get their gum arabic crop from. Um, I wish I could remember where I read that but I have found that to be so interesting that it might have been might have been just uh, might have been an actual truth that I read that because I have noticed that some of my Schmincke Hortum paints are not as pigmented or um, as vibrant as some of the others that are the same color that some other people that I've tested that have the exact same color. So keep that in mind. It may just be that it is a, uh, a result of whatever crop of gum Arabic they used that year. But I didn't find that to be at all a detriment here. Um, it's just a, a characteristic to me that the paints are just not deeply, deeply pigmented. You can certainly get them to, to work very well and to be nice and deep. But when you're dealing with these, I think the main effect you're looking for is that granulation. So I've got one more to swatch out here after this brown. And you can see I've had to put a few more uh, layers of color on the brown. But I'm hoping you can see just by watching this develop over time that that granulation really does show up. I love this gray. It's a nice warm gray. And I can see using this in many, many instances. All of these paints, with the exception of the yellow, kind of have the same value. And that's something to keep in mind as well when you're painting because you might want to uh, leave that consideration to use them only in uh, bits and pieces in your paintings because um, the paintings may not be as vibrant and dynamic if you're using just this set. Uh, you can see on the bottom of that pool of yellow there you can really see that violet hang out at the bottom and as I go over these again hopefully you'll be able to see their pigments separate. And now that I've got this all swatched out, let's zoom in and you can really see right away, you can see the granulation happening. Uh, you can see there where I'm dabbing that up with the yellow, that violet just settled down in there. And all of these really are just stellar performers in their ability to granulate and uh, show those different pigmentations. So I'm gonna leave this to dry on its own. That's another tip I have for you with these super granulating uh, sets, any of the super granulating paints you will get more of a performance in the granulation if you leave it to dry alone. If you add a heat tool to it, it does uh, retard the development and you won't see as much granulation as you would have. So see, look at this. This is in that uh, in the ceramic palette. You can see the granulation happening, the pigment separation, just right away. So I thought that was kind of cool. We'll finish up our swatch test here by putting a little bit of table salt on and we'll let that cure and we'll be back in just a moment. These have had time to dry and I'm not surprised. The granulation is fabulous on these. It's very evident. There's a little drop of water I had on the green, um, which is also an effect you can use. In this case, it was an error, but that's okay. This is just a swatch card. My favorite of the salt is on the brown. It really pulled out a lot of interesting depth of color there. But again, this yellow is just fascinating to me with that violet pigment in there. Uh, the red looks great, the green, all of these kinds of techniques or paints just you can use alone to really enhance the, the texture in your watercolor. And that's the real reason for getting a granulating paint. I want to mention parenthetically though that um, Winsor Newton might have one, but I know that Schmincke has a granulating spray that you can apply to wet watercolor and make any paint granulate. So that might be something you want to try. All of that aside though, what I want to do today here is to sketch what I see when I look at these colors. Now this particular subject is out of my imagination. I've seen many things like this in the past, but it isn't an actual photo. So this is just out of my imagination. Whenever I do have a reference photo in my videos, I will always provide you with a link in the description. So it's usually at the bottom of all of the description. If you ever need any of my reference photos, just look at the description, click more, and then scroll to the bottom. So this particular video though, like I said, this is out of my imagination and I'm kind of thinking of a few different locations. I'm thinking of our drive to Utah and I'm thinking of the Great Sand Dunes National Monument. The Great Sand Dunes National Monument is in Southern Colorado and it has a creek in front of the sand dunes. Now the sand dunes don't look like this. These are more uh, sandstone mesas that you would find in Western Colorado and Eastern Utah. But the sand dunes has a creek in front of it called Madano Creek and it's dry for much of the year. When it's wet, they have a sand sculpture contest. It's really pretty cool. I will I will link to this national monument. So in case you guys want to camp there or travel there, you can. It's uh, 
it's a fascinating place and it's really cool. So um, it'd be a good place to go. But this particular painting that I'm doing here, what I want to do with this mesa is put it in front of a creek that has dried out. Uh, that way I don't have to worry about uh, getting the water in there. I'm just going to have it kind of a, a green basin. So let me go ahead. I'm going to speed this portion up uh, because I think that that makes it even more interesting to see the paints act on this paper. This portion of the video I've got on four times the normal speed. So I really like doing it like this for you though because you can see how the colors shift and blend and change a little bit faster than real time. So you can kind of see that in the scope of this video here. I, I really want to point out some of the, first of all, it was a joy to paint with. I had no issues whatsoever. Uh, but the things I want to point out with are at the base of the mesa where you see the red touching the green. No troubles there. I love how they melded together, but they didn't overpower one another and um, didn't have any trouble with hard lines. Of course, part of that is the paper and uh, the techniques that I'm using. The yellow base that I put on the mesa to start with when I layered the colors over it, I felt like you could still see that yellow through it and uh, I was very happy with that. As I'm going in with this gray on the sky, I thought maybe it would be too dark and too moody, but it wasn't. It turned out to be quite nice and I'll go in later and layer over some other colors with that. The one thing I didn't do on the swatch was to demonstrate lifting. And I will tell you that in this particular set, the yellow and the gray are indeed non-staining, but the other three in this set are semi-staining. So you might have an issue lifting the red, the green, and the brown, but I kind of don't think you will. I, I feel like it's going to depend on the quality of your paper and um, if you can get in there soon enough. It's, uh, it's a technique that we watercolorists use often and I would be surprised if you had any trouble lifting any of these off. Um, I will lift here in just a minute with the sky and you can see how effortless it is. I'm just going in with a second glaze over top and then I'm just using a paper towel to blot off some of that color and you'll see that lifting is just beautiful and it kept the, the tint underneath it. Um, that's the other thing I really like about these is that you can put glazes over top and you don't get any kind of uh, disturbance of your pigment underneath. So these will, uh, not only will they last you a long time, but you will be able to use them many different techniques, many different ways, and without any difficulty at all. The only thing that I really felt like I needed to add were some more intense colors for shadows, and now I'm gonna come in with some watercolor pencils to do just that. According to the Schmincke Hortum website, there are 40 super granulated colors available in half pans and 15 milliliter tubes. Now I have purchased mine in the five milliliter tubes. So I think that that might be a marketing statement that those are the way that going forward, they might be encouraging uh, their manufacturer to make them that way. They do use special gum Arabic, like I was saying, as a binder, and they do have natural ox gall in there as a wetting agent. In my mind, that means that these products are not vegan. So if that is something that's important to you, maybe you'd want to confirm that with the company because ox gall is an animal product. They are made in Germany. Um, they re-wet very well. And the paint does flow, as we saw in the swatching, but it is definitely easy to control. It's, it doesn't get out of hand like in my mind the core watercolors tend to have so much flow that sometimes it, they're a little bit different to, to use. And I am happy to know, maybe you'll be proud of me as well, that my memory is in fact correct about the gum Arabic. Uh, the, the gum Arabic that they use is Cordofan gum Arabic, which does come from uh, different areas in the Sahara Desert. And because it is a natural product, it is subject to annual fluctuations, just like I was mentioning the, the grapes in vineyards, how wine can taste different from year to year. This is the same reason why um, there might be a little bit of changes now and then between the, the years of uh, Schmincke Hortum paints that you might purchase. So just like in your wine that you uh, would find a vintage that would vary from year to year and slightly change the taste, the same is going to happen here with the gum Arabic, um, each vintage of that. And the site does refer to it as a vintage of uh, gum Arabic, which I thought was kind of cool. Uh, at any rate, that's going to give you a different quality from the paints from year to year. So that's also very interesting and something to consider. It's never a fault. It's just a different property. So when you get a, a paint, if you really like it, then um, if it's in a small quantity, maybe go ahead and buy some in a tube so that you can be sure to kind of lock in that vintage uh, for a, a while in your palette. 
Now let's talk a little bit more in depth about the supergranulation colors. It says that they're available in half pans and 15 milliliter tubes. And like, I, like you've seen, I've got my set in a five milliliter tube. So on their website, they don't mention that anymore but um, they might be phasing those out. They are definitely available in those 15 milliliter tubes and you can purchase them individually, which is really nice to know. If you're looking to give these sets as a gift, you can also purchase them in really nice wooden boxes if that's something that appeals to you. So they really do package these in many different ways to just appeal to, um, to, appeal to just about any um, artist out there and for your gifting needs as well. So the neat thing about the pigments that they use here in these paints is that they are all highly light fast. They are all rated either four or five stars and you can use these in full confidence even on commissioned pieces. So here's my little imaginary rendition of a mesa with that uh, Madano Creek dried up in front of it. Um, or you could say that the creek is full of algae and there's water in it. I don't know, depending on how you want to interpret it. But I like tipping it around here in front of the camera so you can really see those different uh, depths of color come out. This brings us to the end of my demonstration of the Super Granulating Colors by Schmincke Horidum, and this was the Urban set. This one is limited edition, so is the Haze, so if this appeals to you, or if those gray shades in the Haze set appeal to you, maybe get them sooner than later, because I don't know what that means with limited edition. It would imply that maybe they're not going to keep them in their color line uh, forever and ever. But it looks like the other sets are here to stay. So if you want to go out and try some granulating watercolors to see what you can create with those, I highly recommend this Schmincke Super Granulating Color Line. Thanks, guys. I hope you enjoyed this little review demonstration. And happy painting. We'll see you next week. Bye now.